our mothers a hand. <laughs> Father, I thank you for every mom, Lord, in this room. I thank you for the mothers who are not, but that we love and care about and value and appreciate. I pray even today, Lord, those watching online or those that may hear this message would be encouraged, that every mother would understand that they are valued, they are appreciated, they're not overlooked, Lord. We know that much of what they do is done in secret. Much of what they do does not uh, get applause or the accolades that sometimes other uh, <clears throat> males in the family get. But Lord, we do honor them today and we see them and we appreciate them in Jesus' name. Amen. I have my beautiful wife in the first row here, so I honor my wife. She is a great mother. <clears throat> and we got a, a few pictures I'm going to show you um, of our little family. That's Susie with the girls. I love that picture because that really does... Um, the girls now, for those who don't know, are 35 years old, and they have <clears throat> seven grandchildren between them. One daughter, Deborah, is in the first row. And they're identical. Go back to that one more time. They're identical twins, so I've got to figure out which one is which here. Okay. Deborah, that's you on the right. Is that true? Okay. That's Deborah on the right. Um, she had the big nose. Only kidding. Little joke there. <laughs> little joke. Little joke. And then the next one, let's see, is Susie a little later. Hairstyles blossomed. <clears throat> and that is Deborah on the left there. And uh, that's Susie in the middle. If you may have thought that was Havel in the middle, but that's Susie. And then the next one, we have our seven grandchildren there. One girl on the right leading the bunch. And then seven young men we're working with. Next one, we have... Susie allowing Gabriella to paint her face. <clears throat> and that's, uh, Susie's a great, great grandma. Not a great, great grandma, but a great grandma. <laughs> and then next one, the finale, which is the family. Um, missing Beckham, uh, the youngest, the baby, was taking the picture. So <laughs> he's not in that. But that's uh, us up at Christmas. And so... We are blessed as a family. I want to talk about um, moms and the incredible role you have. You know, being a mom is a very difficult thing. We live in an age where um, it's very easy to compare yourself with other moms. It probably always has been, but uh, there's so much airplay about mothers uh, that very often moms feel comparatively uh, inadequate. They feel like they don't measure up. They're not like some other moms that they may consider the pristine mom. And so I read this quote. My mother's name was Frances. This is not her quote, but uh, Frances Burke said this, there is no one secret way to be a good mother. Each of us has to invent motherhood for herself and invent it over and over and over as we move forward through it. We can find the common threads of motherhood from talking to each other, but everyone is different. Each child is different, and we are different with each child. No one can explain how to do it. Each of us must figure it out for ourselves. Being a good mother is doing what you are capable of doing under the circumstances that confront you. And those circumstances are yours alone. We have single mothers. Uh, we have mothers who have adopted children. Uh, we have mothers whose uh, husbands are not followers of Jesus, and yet they're trying to raise their children to follow the Lord. So in this room, we have all kinds of situations, uh, and yet God, I believe, wants to encourage every mom who is here. And so I want to talk about the gift of mothers, and they are a gift to each one of us. Uh, there are three questions that every child asks throughout their life. And these are questions that they're really asking their mothers. Um, and I believe that they are for all of us to consider. I know I asked them of my mother. And I know I see the girls asking these questions even today of their mother. I see the grandkids now asking the questions to their mothers and also to their grandmother. The first question is, Mom, do you see me? Mom, do you see me? Um, we can all remember situations where a child is painting something or uh, yesterday we had uh, Judah do a dance and we all watched Judah dance. And then we were going through pictures since Havilah came down from Reading uh, of the things that we had missed, uh, kids uh, playing sports or just doing things around the house. So do you see? And they want to make sure, come watch. And so 
the mother of the child would say, come watch my child. And then the child is there saying, watch me. Um, I remember watching a movie uh, about this uh, Asian family, and uh, the daughter and the mother were estranged uh, for much of the movie, and yet the mother, who was uh, not very talkative, had not expressed a lot of things, Uh, there was tension in the family. At one point, the most poignant moment of the movie was when the mother was speaking to the daughter, who is now a full-blown adult, and she said these words, I see you, I see you. And, and the daughter was just broken, she's crying, but, but she was receiving an infusion of life, an encouragement. And so I would say to you as moms, uh, letting your kids know that you see them, um, they don't have to do, we have our wall filled now with grandkids' pictures. This morning, I guess it was, uh, again, one of them came and uh, he's not particularly artistic, okay? Uh, there are others that uh, would have a greater gift. Uh, it was stick figures at best. Uh, but uh, he wanted me to get some tape and then put it up on the wall of the drawings that different ones had done. And so I acclaimed, I affirmed, I encouraged. And so you moms have that role of doing that. It doesn't have to be grandiose moments, of course, but you do it all the time. And so every child also has his own personality, own temperament. Um, And so you moms have to say, Lord, give me wisdom to be able to relate to this child in this way. My wife and I had a situation this past week with a uh, fellow pastor in the region whose daughter wound up coming here, um, and we wound up, um, she uh, came to us at one point, and I met her, and I knew uh, that she was a daughter of a regional pastor, and uh, I could see she was going through some challenges in her life, and so I offered, she's an adult, I offered to meet with her and my wife. We don't do that often, but I felt this was the Lord's leading, and so for the last number of months, we have met with her, my wife and I have, and finally, it came to the point where there was a um, discussion that needed to take place between her and her parents. She was adopted, she had two siblings, she felt like um, she never quite measured up to them. And, uh, and so we were able to then go this week and spend two hours in the home of her parents Um, and with her kind of guide the process of the parents with tears. Mom just just weeping out of love, a very compassionate, tender mom, just expressing once again uh, her love for her daughter, Uh, but really saying these words, I see you, I see your uniqueness, I see your difference, I see your value, you are important to me. Uh, The dad, a little different style, Dad was military, uh, he likes order, and, uh, and yet was able to express in his own way uh, to his daughter how much he loved her. And so all of us can take advantage of these opportunities to say that. Um, my daughter, who's in the first row, uh, just moved into a new house, and we just came back, we're very busy, and uh, she picked us up at the airport very graciously a few, years, a few days ago and said, um, I said, well, we wanted to come over. She said, well, the house is really not ready yet. Um, Wait till we get a little more ordered. And so I thought that meant, you know, wait a few days, but that meant don't come over tonight, okay? And so she texted me and said, you know, when are you coming over? And so today I'll be coming over. Uh, We've not seen it yet. I've not seen it yet, but uh, I see you. You know, and I I see, I want to see your house. I want to see what's there. Um, and it's important, you know, to say I'm sorry if I missed that cue. Um, you know, I, I know with uh, the girls, for me, I have to ask their forgiveness often. Um, I'm not wired like a woman. I don't connect the dots. And so um, when I don't connect the dots, then I say, okay, uh, I'm sorry for not acknowledging and not seeing what I need to see. Psalm 1, 139 says that each one of our children are fearfully and wonderfully made. And uh, when, when they know that we see them, then they feel valuable and important. Uh, the second question every child asks is, Mom, do you hear me? Uh, the ability to listen. Uh, in the book of James it says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Um, in, in my family, my, my father was not a player in my life. Um, and so it was tragic because I didn't have a relationship with him. And so the day he died, frankly, at 17, I was glad it was over. Um, I went away to boarding school when I was 11, never lived at home again. And so I didn't have that rapport or that sense of approval and acceptance. And so um, I, I looked for that in my life. I looked for the affirmation. I actually didn't like being around older men. 
uh, because I didn't feel comfortable with them. Now I is one. But uh, I did feel uh, awkward in their presence because I didn't understand them. I didn't grow up with a dad that was a player in my life. And so the idea of being abandoned and rejected was important to me and significant in my life. And some of you know my history that it was only 11 years ago, having been a Christian for 30 years, that I finally realized that God didn't just love me in some kind of generic way because he had to, but he liked me. He liked the quality that I have uh, in my life. And so uh, I, I never had a father who would listen to me, but I have a heavenly father who will listen to me. And you moms, because you're around, uh, Deborah in the front row uh, said to me that it was mom when I traveled as an evangelist who was the one that listened. And I remember marveling. Susie really had a grace in her life to listen. Um, I have the same number of ears as Susie, but she has an incredible capacity to listen. If you ever talk to Susie, she will stand and listen. She really has a grace to absorb and make you feel valued. And um, I'm a little more hyperactive. My love language is words of affirmation, and so I will try and throw as many words of affirmation to as many people, uh, but don't have the quality time uh, to just sit and listen. Uh, I've tried to discipline myself, but it's not my grace. But moms have to learn to listen and absorb and hear their child out. Uh, and I, I saw Susie do that very effectively um, in our lives. I'm, I remember in the teenage years, and they've done studies about teenage years when it seems like the dead cells just continue to dominate the living cells. And so there's a battle that goes on in the brains of teenagers. Uh, and so... The live cells will win eventually, but it's a touch-and-go situation for a number of years. And so we have had situations uh, uh, with the girls. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, but <laughs> Havila. Anyway, but Havila particularly was the one where we'd have to spend a lot more time um, just trying to uh, work with her attitudes. Uh, Deborah would tend to be more compliant. Deborah was also part of the FBI, and so she would... Uh, <laughs> give us understanding about uh, evil things that were taking place in our house that we would want to know about. And we would bless Deborah for her compliance and, and let her know how valuable her uh, efforts were, clandestine efforts in our house. Um, and we reward her for those things, for doing that. But... Uh, it generated, especially in the teenage years, you know, in the, you know, to me, the glory years are from like six to ten. You know, if you've trained your children to obey, their souls are trained, then from six to ten, you know, you can ask them to comply and they comply. But somewhere around 11, they begin to begin, why, you know? They begin to ask the questions, their identity are coming into more full bloom, and they begin to question and uh, you can't just say, because I said so. You can't just say, just do it, you know. I mean, you can, it's just not going to work as effectively. So uh, you then have to move into uh, a season called the siege. And during the siege <laughs> is where you have to spend lengthier periods of time. And that's where the listening and the communication. And um, I was not really good at it. Um, again, that's not surprising to any of you who know me. Um, I tend to be very hyperactive, very intense. And so my wife, early on, um, would watch me respond in a situation. Again, I didn't really have a grid for it growing up. I didn't have a family. It wasn't leave it to Beaver. It was leave Francis. So anyway, uh, that was my experience. And so Susie had a place at the dinner table every night. She called her father daddy. She was close to her mom and uh, grandma even in her life. Um, and so uh, I would watch Susie do things differently. And later on, Susie would say, honey, you know how you were doing that? You were trying that that really wasn't very effective. And so she would gently begin to instruct me. And finally, I realized, you know what? Uh, I should not be really listening to my uh, views. Uh, I am the second player. And I think it's important in life to understand what your gifts and what your graces are. If you have a spouse that has a grace in a certain area, then ski in their wake uh, during those situations where they excel. And so Susie would really try and say, don't major on the minors. You know, you're blowing this up. You're going to win the battle, lose the war. And so I, I began to just discern uh, there were times for me to underreact because she was doing such a good job of 
doing that. So listening. Both of our daughters are very verbal, and so uh, they were able to communicate effectively what was on their heart, and so Susie would spend that time. Um, And then during those teenage years, uh, when you were involved in conversations that you did not want to end with them going to their rooms, sulking, and to being angry, you wanted to talk it through. Uh, that's when it took many, many hours, and I mean hours, sometimes till one o'clock in the morning, uh, talking things out. And so I encourage you to do that. Uh, my heart goes out to single parents. Uh, but I would say don't let your children uh, go to their room, uh, upset, angry, uh, be willing to listen, and especially while you have them in your home. I also would say that if it comes to the point where a child um, is not going to comply, uh, and we had that conversation with the, with the girls, at one point um, they wanted to listen to music that we knew was not healthy, rather than just say uh, no, that would be a uh, no. We then said, why don't we get the lyrics to the songs, and let's sit down and discuss the lyrics of what's being said. And we did. We sat down, discussed the lyrics, began to share with them. And, uh, and then at a certain point, you know, it's, it's time to say, you know, sweetheart, we love you. We'd love you to live here. That would be an awesome thing. But in our home, these are going to be kind of the guidelines that we need you to comply with. We would say that uh, in love, not uh, trying to throw gasoline on the fire, but water. And, and it turned out well. Obviously, they're here with us. I remember one time, though, um, the girls were going to a Christian school. Out of the 12 years of their grammar school and high school, uh, eight of them, they were homeschooled. That was just what we did. We traveled a lot. And then four of them, they were in Christian schools. And so at one point, then when they were 12, uh, they came home. And uh, Havila sat down. And Susie, literally, and again, I, I recognize there are moms who work, and uh, some of this makes it much more difficult. Um, Susie um, would spend time with the girls when they came home from school. She would shut down and listen to them, talk to them. And very often, frankly, during the Christian school days, not knocking Christian schools, it depends on the one you have, but she had to undo a lot of the things that their peers were trying to put into their, uh, their lives. And so at one point, Havla came home and she made this grandiose statement, I don't want to be a Christian. And so at that point, I'm like, <laughs> and so I, I'm kind of watching Susie, how she's responding, but I'm like, oh, and so I just kind of absorbed it, like, mm, that's nice, honey, good. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. Anyway, so I sat there and, and Susie didn't react. She just kind of absorbed it and then gradually began to just ask questions. And, um, well, how was your day, honey? What happened? And it turned out the girls um, in a Christian school were awarded an award for the the best Christian character uh, in their junior high class. It was mostly Deborah. But anyway, the best Christian character, no. (laughs) Deborah's shaking your head. I can't believe you're doing that. That's pride, Deborah, right there. (laughs) She's going, it's true. No. And so, um, because of that, uh, some of the girls in the class were jealous, apparently, and began to mock them and call them the glory girls. And all of a sudden, they were rejected by their friends. And so, Havila uh, was coming home saying, I don't want to be a Christian, if that's what it's going to cost. And Susie was able, over an extended period of time, to unpack that as I sat and watched and absorbed uh, her wisdom in doing it properly. And obviously Havila is still a Christian today. (laughs) She's actually speaking in another church in town um, today. 10 principles for spiritual parenting. And I love this. I actually posted this this morning on my Facebook. Listen to your child as if he is a national hero. Listen as if he is, she is a spiritual prophet. Listen as if he is your boss. Listen as if she came down from Mars. Listen as if he holds the future of the world stored in his mind. Try for one minute giving her, atten- her the attention you would give the people you mentioned above. Listen with respect and he will be comfortable expressing his thoughts, both good and bad. Now I would say, again, there's no uh, revelation here that girls talk more than boys. And so if you have boys, getting them to listen. How's your day? Good. What happened at school? Nothing. 
And so it's hard. You've got to prime that pump. Try and find a topic that would be of interest. Do something with them that they would want to talk about. And again, don't be discouraged if boys have less words than girls. Uh, Many times when Susie and the girls were ratcheting up their conversation, I would just kind of slip out of the room. At that point, I realized I could not compete. I didn't have the skills to compete at that level. Number three, three questions every child asks, Mom, do you accept me? Uh, Being loved and unconditionally accepted is each of our greatest desire. Accepting a child doesn't mean you accept everything a child does. You know, I was uh, a crazed young person. Uh, into drugs, into the counterculture, rebellious, angry. Um, And so my mother, by the time I came home from college after five years visiting her prior to coming across the country in 1971, uh, I was arrogant, I was bitter, um, and uh, I'm sure I was extremely cocky toward her. Uh, But I always felt her love and acceptance. She couldn't out-talk me, um, she couldn't debate me, but she could love me and make me feel valued and accepted. And so I appreciate that. And so when I received the Lord on Mother's Day, as I said, I knew it was because of her prayers. And I called her up and I said, Mom, I know it's because of your prayers. And she said, I know. Anyway, she (laughs) was confident, strong lady, understood that. But I believe if a child grows up feeling that he cannot please his parents, then he will likely feel that he cannot please God. And so for me to know, it took me 30 years as a Christian, that God liked me, that he was not disappointed with me. When he thought of me, he didn't just focus on what I didn't do right. He didn't just look at my sins. He covered them uh, with his blood. He forgave me and placed them as far as the east is from the west. And yet he looked at me with a smile, that he accepted me, my flaws and all. Um, And that made me feel valuable. Um, And that's the way God sees all of us and our children. And we as a parent, you and I need, especially moms, I believe, need to have a grace to accept your child, even during the deformed years, even during the brain damage years, when you're seeing them do things that you're saying, this is going to hurt them. Well, do the best you can to speak the truth in love, but always let them know that they have a place in your heart. Uh, And acceptance, uh, I believe, is something that that Jesus uh, experienced with his father when his father said, this is my beloved son um, in whom I am well pleased. Um, I believe that we take pleasure in our children. I know with the grandkids, um, right now it's an easier stage. They're six and under. Uh, Not that they're doing anything tremendous at this point, but we fully love and accept them. We want that to extend uh, into years, maybe where they're going to do and say things we're not going to fully agree with, but we're going to love them and accept them. Proverbs 22 says this, train a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not turn from it. Uh, That literally means develop a thirst for God in your child. Um, What I would say, and my... I would implore you in, the, in these realms. Pray over your children. We have, this tends to be a little older service. You know, we have uh, a lot of young people, a lot of young families in our church. Uh, more came last night, more will come at the 11 o'clock and 10 o'clock. But <clears throat> spending time praying over your children. Um, our girls would say, they, they grew up, and every night as they went to bed, they would feel these palms on their forehead. And just as they lay in bed from the youngest age, they felt the security of a parent praying over them. And, and very often, these were educational times where you, you wouldn't be saying, Lord, help them not to be a brat tomorrow, Lord. But you'd be speaking in more um, gradual terms. Lord, we pray that uh, Deborah would be able to have a heart that wants to just respond to your spirit. And again, whatever that prayer might be, but let it be educational, let it be loving, let it be caring, and let it also and speak vision and identity and destiny. And uh, as they're compliant, as they're listening. You know, the I didn't, again, have... Um, parents, frankly, that tucked me in bed. Uh, But in camp, um, when I went away to camp from 5 to 14, again, my dad was in politics. He wasn't around. And so I was five years of age. I'm a little boy lying in a bed in a camp for two months every summer. But uh, for whatever reason, the camp would play um, Perry Como singing The Our Father. 
And I remember at different times, I remember feeling alone, I remember crying in bed, but I would hear coming across the loudspeakers, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I remember just lying there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And just lying there. I remember just crying different nights, just, you know, feeling alone, but somehow feeling the comfort of a father at that point. And so what I would say, you as a parent, spend that time loving your kids and especially um, being there uh, during those times to pray with them. Um, I know we would travel with the girls and we would teach them songs as we traveled and we would play games with them as we traveled. Uh, but, but just to, to get them to learn how to pray, uh, getting them to be able to speak it forth. But train them up. And the Bible says that, that when they're older, uh, that, that they will have a bent when there's hair on their face in the teenage years, if you've spent that time molding and shaping them, then they're going to continue to go forward um, down that path. So see your children, hear your children, accept them. You may have older children that never felt accepted. It's not too late. I, I have an older men who have said to me, I, I never had my father tell me he loved me. I didn't know, and, and we live in an age, too, where there's a lot of mother wounds. I do a, a uh, class once a month at Mercy Ministries, about 40 young ladies who have various kinds of, of addictions and major problems from around the country, and uh, as I interviewed them and talked with them, uh, I have found that they have even more mother wounds. Uh, we live in an age where uh, wounded moms sometimes don't know how to be the moms they would like to be, and so for you to express I see you, I hear you, I accept you as a mom. It's never too late to do that. Um, I know in my own life, you know, I, I would call my mom and, um, you know, she would, uh, even as an older woman, as a grandma, um, she would express her value to me. And when she got senile and was unable to do that, I would miss my mom being able to express those words of affirmation to my life. So do that, moms. And I know that many of you are, and so thank you for doing that. Uh, in, in Sacred Parenting, Gary Thomas said this, once we realize that we are sinners, that the children God has given us are sinners, and that together as a family we are to grow toward God, then family life takes on an entirely new purpose and context. It becomes a sacred enterprise when we finally understand that God can baptize dirty diapers, toddlers' tantrums, and teenagers' silence in order to transform us into people who more closely resemble Jesus Christ. Uh, just being around uh, our grandkids uh, is exhausting. And, and so I get a little taste of what moms have to do and the amount of effort. Um, uh, last night, I'll tell you a little story. Again, Ben and, and I'd have or there. I get up this morning uh, in the sixes, whatever that was, trying to sleep in because I have a 24-hour siege coming yesterday, but uh, tomorrow rather. Um, and Ben had gotten up at 2:30 in the morning because uh, the baby Beckham was crying uh, and didn't want to disturb us, so he drove Beckham around uh, for about an hour. Uh, then drove back in the driveway. He started crying again and drove him around for another two hours. We're going to put a statue in our courtyard of Ben, uh, amazing guy, amazing dad. So uh, he has some female qualities as well, apparently. Anyway, but um, here are several verses that describe maternal images. We talk of God as a he, but really God personifies all the qualities of a mother that we esteem. Isaiah 40, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Uh, Isaiah 66, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Um, you know, the only tender moment I remember of my dad, uh, somehow we were home as a young boy watching TV, and I remember his big warm hands rubbing my back 
Um, that's the only kind of tender moment I remember. Somehow there was at least that memory of the, the love of a father being extended. Uh, and so moms, you do that so well. Psalm 13, my heart is not proud, my Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great things or things too wonderful for me. And really that's what mothers do. <laughs> you know, mothers, this is a, you know, you are mauled by the mundane. You are doing things that seem totally insignificant, but well, you really are modeling the heart of God. But I have calmed myself and quieted my ambitions. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Um, I want to invite Susie to the stage. We're going to pray right now. But would you welcome Susie to the stage as she comes? I want to pray for you. Um, actually, I'll have Susie pray in a moment. But if you are a grandmother, would you stand? If you are a grandmother, and would you remain standing? Thank you, grandmothers. Um, you are the memory makers. Uh, you are those that uh, don't have to be there 24-7 in most cases, but you are still a vital mom that is a pinch hitter coming in there and uh, spending that time with the children, making them feel valued, uh, thank God that you are alive. Thank God that you are still able to do that. Um, and so we commend you, Grandma. Just stay standing if you would. And now for the mothers who are here, old moms, stepmoms, single moms, would you stand as well? Um, pardon? Foster moms. Foster moms, please stand. Give our moms a hand. I, I want to say a few things to encourage you, and I'm going to have Susie pray then. You know, you can invent your own way of being a mom. Um, every mom has their own unique grace and on your life. And very often, a moms can go to bed thinking that what I've done is not good enough. Let me say, what you're doing is good enough. I know that can sound like a, a magic wand to you, but I want to affirm you, what you're doing is good enough. God may give you further insights of what you can do and what you should do, but he really does not want you to ever think uh, that your efforts uh, are not sufficient. Uh, and so maybe today you heard some things about what you can do uh, to say, I see you, I hear you, and I accept you. But he wants you to know that God sees you, and God hears you, and God accepts you as a mom and val values you. And so I want Susie to pray for you today. And so let's extend our hearts, men, and other ladies in the room, future moms. Uh, would you pray as well? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. God, today we honor mothers. Lord, we just thank you for each mother represented here. Yes. We thank you for each grandmother represented here. God, we ask a blessing over them, Lord. And, and God, we also pray for the hearts of the, the moms and grandmas that are sad or broken, things that have happened in relationships, Lord, that uh, you only you can repair. So we just ask you comfort them, Holy Spirit, yes. today. And we just want to thank you, God. We, we pray a blessing. And yes. God, give, give young moms wisdom, Lord, and understanding into each one of their children's lives. Lord, that they could raise them to uh, serve you and to know you all the days of their life. Yes, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. And just bless it as they go forth from here. Let them feel honored and loved this day. In Jesus' name, In Jesus amen. Name. Amen. Let's give our moms a hand one more time.